Hi everyone, and welcome to the game room. I don't know about the rest of you, but I miss arcades. Sure, we've got some modern options, and certainly we have an abundance of smaller retro arcades scattered about and trying to keep that experience alive for the next generation. But there was something magical about the chatter of players, the cacophony of beeps and attract modes, and spending a small fortune trying to get good at more difficult games while your friends cheer you on. Thankfully, we've also reached a point where home consoles can run real arcade accurate ports of these classics with ease, as well as sparing our pockets the countless quarters we spent back in the day. I will always prefer the authentic experience, but there's something great about having accessibility to these games at home or on the go with Nintendo Switch. Today on Switch Guide, we're going to talk about one such compilation of arcade ports from the Japanese developer Saikyo as we look at Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha, published by NIS America. To be honest, I've always admired shmups from afar. It's true, I cut my teeth as a young lad on very early incarnations like Space Invaders and one of my all-time favorites, Galaga. But comparing those to the white-knuckle intensity of bullet hell shooters, I've always felt a little paranoid and was reluctant to approach them in the arcades back in the 90s. Not to mention, just practicing would have cost me a ton of quarters, which was a bit of a luxury back then that I couldn't quite afford. As I said, we're now in this wondrous era of arcade-accurate emulation in our home releases. No longer are we bound to interpretations of games limited by hardware, but rather we're getting the full-on arcade experience. It's no secret that I have an affinity toward proper preservation efforts, and I'll confess that having a library of arcade classics in my home was a dream come true, both for me as a gamer, as well as for my wallet. When NIS America announced the Psycho Shooting Stars collections, I thought it was a great chance to add some really definitive shooters to my growing Nintendo Switch arcade collection. Joining the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, Namco Museum Arcade Pack, and more. Good grief, I'm getting old. This was a chance to finally hone my skills on some proper shooters. Now, I'll always tip my hat to NIS America, as they absolutely know how to handle a collector's edition. And it so happens that the only physical release of Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha is a limited edition. Not only do you get a lovely physical cartridge, but you also get an art book art cards, and a three CD soundtrack set. I love it! And there's still a second release with additional titles called Bravo. The alpha release includes six games. Strikers 1945, Strikers 1945-2, Strikers 1945-3, Soul Divide, Dragon Blaze, and Zero Gunner 2. This compilation also includes several customization options, including multiple display options for each title. So, whether you prefer sharp pixels or a slight blur over everything, or a pretty accurate CRT filter, this release has you covered. Personally, I dig the CRT look, but pick whatever works best for you. You can also tweak other options related to fighter count, credits, how high of a score rewards an extra fighter, things like that. You can also set the difficulty level, which is perfect for someone like me that kind of sucks at bullet hell shooters. Though I am getting better, I think. So let's take a look at each title you're getting in this package, starting with Strikers 1945. Strikers 1945 came out back in 1995 you're able to pick from multiple planes, each with their own set of attacks. You have your normal shot, a charge shot, and of course a bomb to help you clear out the little guys and some of the bullets. I tended to use my bombs whenever I felt backed into a corner with bullets flying everywhere. You can, of course, get power-ups to strengthen your shot, too. I love the bosses in this game. There's nothing more satisfying than fighting a stealth bomber only to have it transform into a frickin' robot mid-fight. That's the kind of random badassery I want to see in a game like this. The music is pumping, bullets are flying everywhere, and I'm the last fighter against a seemingly endless army. This is what I want in a game like this. I also feel it incumbent upon myself to at least address that in the original arcade version in Japan, 
provided you beat the game earning gold medals on every level, you get, well, an end screen revealing the pilots, and revealing a lot of them, if you catch my meaning. Suffice to say, it's not surprising this feature was cut in most releases of this game, and honestly, I'm not talented enough yet to try on this release. The sequel, Strikers 1945-2, was released in 1997, and as expected, it expanded upon the original. You still have the same three types of shots, as well as the power-ups. Now, this isn't a bad thing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Rather, this is an expansion of what made the original great, and with a lot more polish. Strikers 1945-3, released in 1999, continued to expand on this idea, but we go a little bit further. Here, we trade out World War II aeroplanes for modern fighter jets, like the F-A-18 Hornet and the F-117A Stealth. Other than that, it's pretty similar to the previous entries, although still more polish and some fresh levels. Again, this isn't a bad thing. Do I even need to count how many iterations of Street Fighter II exist? Now, Soul Divide is a bit of an unusual horizontal shooter. Released in 1996 in the arcade, it was eventually ported to the Sony PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. It immediately feels like a lot of ideas were tossed into a blender here. You have the pre-rendered 2D sprites that were experimented with a lot in the post-Donkey Kong Country world. You can shoot, but you can also do a close-up melee attack, and you can change out which magic you have equipped. The levels feel pretty short. I feel like right when I'm getting a groove going, I am already at the boss. This wasn't my favorite in the collection, but I do kind of like it for what it is, and you have to appreciate it for trying a lot of new ideas. Dragon Blaze was cool. This one is another vertical shooter developed and published back in 2000. Dragon Blaze is definitely more bullet hell than the others so far. Like Strikers 1945, we have three kinds of shots but you can actually hop off your dragon and shake it up a bit. Look, I always equate shooters to some kind of air or spacecraft, but there's something badass about riding a dragon into battle against overwhelming odds. Zero Gunner 2 actually came out in arcades and on the Sega Dreamcast in Japan back in 2001. Sadly, this was a game where most of the original data was lost, and so it had to essentially be rebuilt from scratch for the Switch release. Definitely a cheer of approval and appreciation from us here in the game room. Thank you for keeping this game alive. Anyway, in Zero Gunner 2, you actually shoot in different directions, kind of locking the direction of fire as you fly. You pick from three helicopters and battle through waves of enemies until confronting the boss at the end of the stage. At first, the multi-directional approach caught me off guard, but once I grew accustomed to it, I can really see the appeal and how this shook things up. In conclusion, this is a nice package of classic shmups, neatly curated and preserved. I don't know if arcades will ever return to prominence in the United States in the future, and it's wonderful to see such care and respect dedicated to keeping these titles alive. All in all, the additional goodies in this package just can't be beat. I loved Psycho Shooting Stars Alpha, and I cannot wait to dive into Bravo. That's it for this episode of Switch Guide. Thank you for hanging out with me in the game room. We will see you next time.